Today we're exploring about tomorrow's leaders. And I'm just looking at the depths of the back there, and there's plenty of leaders hidden away there. So, like you, this matters to me deeply. Most of us have sons and daughters, and we want to create a, a world for them that is better than ours. Lives for them that are more fulfilled than ours. And societies in which they can live well, with sufficient prosperity and a rich quality of life in all its facets. And today I'm going to share a few thoughts on how education must serve us and provide us better life. I'm Dean of the African operation of a large international business school, Henley, that's uh, globally recognized and accredited. In fact, it's far better known in, in Europe and Asia than it is in Africa, although that's going to change. It's the oldest business school in Europe and recognized in a number of ways in independent ranking as one of the top 1% of business schools in the world. So naturally, you expect us to have the expert answers to most of the questions about leadership and business. Well, we don't. The world is moving much too fast for such expertise to remain current for long. Questions of leadership are far too fascinating and complex to be amenable to simplistic answers, clever algorithms, or memorable sound bites. We're much more interested in working with passionate, committed people to discover the better questions to address tomorrow's challenges than on parading yesterday's answers. Education is what matters today. I don't think education is about filling people up with knowledge and giving them certainties, which can only be false certainties, as life is not certain. I think it's about setting people alight with a passion for learning and building them self-respect, a true confidence based in hard work, trial and error, and humility. It's about understanding business as a force for good and development, rather than just a mechanism for wealth. Our greatest joy is not taking straight-A students and passing them through with a distinction, but to take Amy Mabusella, a single mum, or Temba, who was school barefoot in rural Pozzoli Natal, and graduate them with an international MBA that is the same standard as a top European, US, or Asian MBA, with a blind international assessment that's audited independently by some of the toughest accrediting bodies in the world. We're looking for an increased rate of learning, not straight A's and perfection, but progress and a willingness to make mistakes on the journey to improvement. We criticize our governments and our politicians without constraint, sometimes with a good cause, but I believe the solutions lie with us and in the power of good business. How should universities and business schools and universities be serving you today in the international business world and in Africa? We say that our mission is to build the people that build the businesses that build Africa. I can imagine every now, every now and again, what, you know, 15 years time, what's Africa going to look like? What are we going to be? How are we going to be? We're not, we're not defined by our borders or by our post-colonial heritage. What is it we're going to be? We're going to be transnational, confident. We're going to be recognized for the quality of our talent more than for the quality of our resources. Education needs to change. False certainties and pre-baked answers won't help us in creating this new Africa. And why is that certainty false? It's because it's based on some fundamental confusions. One of them that I think is easy to confuse education with intelligence. And to confuse lecturing with learning. Daily we confuse having resources with having resourcefulness. And if we're, not, if we're not careful, we're confused having money and making money with creating value. We mix up clever analysis with good interpretation and good decision making. We confuse profit with purpose and business plans with business models, with being a strategic planner with being a good strategist, a good strategic thinker. And we confuse creating shareholder value with creating customer value. In a country whose education system was co-opted for the privileged few intended for senior positions and closed to the majority who were intended, at best, for middle management, 
It became easy for some to imagine that the educated minority was smarter than the rest. But of course, just because somebody's educated doesn't mean that they're necessarily intelligent. And it's startlingly true that just because somebody is not educated doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. In fact, I've come to see that the intelligence of our people in Africa and South Africa is far greater than even we mostly believe. Our MBA students are from all parts of society, about 65, 70% black Africans, take one of the world's most intensively quality audited MBAs, taught by the same professors and lecturers as people do in Europe, to the same syllabus and blind assessed by the same people overseas as do our Chinese, Indian, British, Finnish, and German colleagues. And they pass at the same rate to the same standard. In Africa, we have all the intelligence and talent we need. I've been teaching for 20 years and I see proof of this, another courageous story every week. What's missing is skills. Here's a simple formula. Potential plus skills plus purpose equals performance. And what builds skills is discipline, application, patience, and time. And from this grows true confidence. And when you know you're a good learner in life, in real life, not just the classroom, you begin to know that you can handle most of the things that life throws at you. When we help ourselves and others to have self-respect and confidence in our skills, you find that people really look for shortcuts, and they really look for the corrupt opportunities. It's really easy to be cynical, but cynicism is a failure of spirit and leadership. It really means we've been disappointed in our passions once too often. As leaders, we can't be cynical any more than we can be cynical as parents or educators. We can be shrewd, we can be discerning, we can be worldly wise, even critical, but never cynical, as optimism is what builds better futures. For decades, much of the world has been Afro-pessimistic. It became the dominant logic in working with Africa. And while we have huge and often scary-looking challenges, the time for Afro-pessimism is over. We need to scrub all traces from it, of it from our minds and from our attitudes. The covers of Time magazine of The Economist over the last year or so have sung a different song, Africa Rising, that we saw in a DHL presentation. It's the world next dominant economic powerhouse. And if it's going to be Africa rising and not Africa uprising, we're going to have to do something about employment, jobs, and skills. We have to lead. And we have to believe that we have the intelligence, capacity to learn, skills and imagination to make that real and provide opportunity for all. I was listening to Barack Obama's State of the Nation address recently. In it, he was talking about sacrifice, mistakes, collective effort, and the fact that America has not come easily. Africa and our collective progress won't come easy either. If ever there's a time to stand up and be counted, to commit to a new form of heroism, it's now. Heroism of education, service, development, good leadership, and the path to skills. Tomorrow's leaders are not leaders for profit. Tomorrow's leaders are leaders of purpose. Leaders have to be heroes in some way. And a hero at heart sacrifices for the good of others and is brave in pursuit of a cause. So what's our cause now? What's our cause? And who are the new African heroes? I think the cause is education and that business is a force for good. And I think you are the new African heroes. So what wonderful times we live in to have a calling so clear and an opportunity to make such a difference. Thanks for your time.